The New Cosmos by David J. Eicher is a nonfiction book written about the topic of the future of life, the solar system, and the universe. Eicher, a journalist of the Astronomy Magazine, was inspired by Carl Sagan's show Cosmos, a show he avidly watched as a teen. This book was created as almost a tribute to Carl Sagan's show and to highlight new astronomical findings that the common people may not know about. Eicher starts his book by detailing how people discovered astronomy, and then moves on to discuss recent astronomical discoveries, such as the geology of the innermost planets and different astronomers' research with dark matter, and finishes with a discussion of the future of life in the universe. He aims to educate people in the style of Carl Sagan about life and the universe through his discussions of these topics. Eicher uses multiple studies and papers by astronomers combined with his own knowledge from being an astronomy journalist to support his ideas in the new cosmos. Although Eicher covers many topics in his book, I found that one of the most important were when he talked about the innermost planets because of their similarity to Earth. In these chapters, Eicher mentions the geosphere of Venus. He discusses lava flows on Venus and compares them to Earth's own lava flows. I was surprised to learn that Venus has lava flows in mountains, but not actual subduction or plate tectonics. There are also different terms for volcanic activity on Venus than on Earth, such as arachnoids, mountains that resemble spiderwebs, novas, old and active volcanoes, and coronae, formed from upwelling of lava. This made sense to me because Venus has different geologic activity than Earth. Eicher also discusses the future of life, which he also found to be an interesting topic. He related life in the biosphere to how it may or may not live on through astronomical events, and discussed the odds of coming across another intelligent civilization in the future. Eicher mentions the term Darwinian evolution, meaning that organisms with genetically superior traits survive to pass on their DNA, and complex molecules, which are the molecules that create life. He also talks about the errors on Earth and great extinctions, exploring the possibility of these events happening on exoplanets. One passage from the new cosmos that really made me think was, in 1980, we knew nothing of dark energy, and far less than we do now about dark matter. The nature of black holes is still mostly conjecture. We did not know the intricate details of how the sun will die, or what will happen when life comes to an end on Earth. We did not yet have a good idea of how the moon formed. We utterly lacked an understanding of the nature of Martian or Venusian geological history. Pluto is still safely considered a planet. We had no evidence for numerous planets orbiting stars near us in the galaxy. This made me realize how far humans have come in their astronomy research, research over the past 38 years. If people have discovered all these things in less than 40 years with not as as advanced technology as there is today, then who knows what astronomers may discover in the future. Old technology is constantly being replaced with modern technology. For example, the James Webb Space Telescope is being launched next year, a space telescope much more powerful than the Hubble Space Telescope. Throughout this book, I learned more about the universe around me. The new cosmos succeeded in its goal of showing me the universe, from life on Earth to distant planets and galaxies. I see the universe all around me now, and I see that everything is connected to one another and has its own place in the universe. I realized how small humans and the Earth really are, compared to the sun, the galaxy, and the universe. I realized that while humans may continue to make discoveries about the universe, they ultimately cannot change anything outside of the Earth and can only wait to see what will happen in the future. I would definitely recommend this book to anyone who wants to learn what actually happens in the universe and whoever wants to read and think about their significance in the universe. The New Cosmos was a thought-provoking and informational book that taught me a lot and made me think differently about the universe. Thank you for listening.